All right guys, so in this week's video, I wanna show you a lot of my setups on how I tie spawn, how I do a double bead rig from a crankbait to a spinner to a jerk bait, float rod, all the little tips and tricks how to tie spawn, adding cure. Take five minutes right now, just watch this if you haven't done a lot of steelhead or trout fishing, because I guarantee you there's probably gonna be a different tip or technique in here you probably haven't tried or you weren't aware of. Now the first thing I wanna talk about is all the gear that we're gonna be doing. And the first one, I'll start with the reel. Now I've partnered up with PC Fun Reels. What I love about these reels, guys, you hear me say it over and over, super smooth drag. When you hook a steelhead or something in the river and they start screaming drag, you wanna have a smooth drag. I also like the price point. If you guys haven't checked these out, the price point is phenomenal. If you're gonna pick one of these things up, you just check out. EH15, use that discount code in the description. Check out, buy a couple of these reels. I promise you're gonna really like them. They're super light, they have a carbon drag and um, a 10-1 ball bearing. So they're, they're gonna last you a long time. I've been using them all season. As far as the rod goes, there's a lot of different choices when it comes to a steelhead rod. Um, a lot of the ones I've been using are either St. Croix, Lama Glass, Raven, um, a lot of different choices, but I just go with about, for our trips, a 10 foot medium action rod if you're gonna pick something up like that. This happens to be a Lama Glass, and, uh, and that's what I'm using. Now as far as, here's kind of the, the details for you guys that are gonna get into this. So if you're gonna get out and steelhead fish in the next week here, here in Wisconsin, we're gonna have a variable difference in temps. So a few days it'll be in the 20s, and a few days it'll be in the 30s and 40s. So those days, early mornings when you got ice flows or it's really cold in the 20s, you wanna use a, you wanna add mono on your reel. You wanna float fish with mono. As far as the, the line size that I recommend, eight or 10 pound test, anything that's kind of a limp or loose like Trilene XL, um, eight pound test, 10 pound test, really good choice for mono. Now, for you, for those of you guys that, that haven't fished mono when it's warmer, I have another PC Fun reel here that I'm rigging up and I've got a uh, 10 pound braid on it. So I do like braid when it's warmer because braid floats on the surface. So it makes it a lot easier if you wanna go ahead and start mending the line when you're float fishing. So we're gonna talk about float fishing and our rigs and setups here. And uh, I've talked about this for a long time. A couple of the things that work really, really good that are very, very simple for float fishing, especially for you guys that do not have spawn, you can't get spawn, you don't wanna kill a fish, take the spawn out, um, totally get that. So let's talk about a handful of artificial baits for those of you guys that don't wanna um, use bait. Uh, you can use a fly rod and swing flies or a spay rod. But I also like a double bead rig or a single bead rig, right? And what you got right there is two beads pegged on there, snelled on there, right? Eight millimeter, you can go with eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, six millimeter uh, beads. Um, beads come like, you know, you can get a bunch of different types of beads. This happens to be Slay and Steel. There's Bloop Bead Company. A um, couple other ones that have sent me some beads I'm forgetting right now. Uh, but bead, a bead and float setup with a series of shot guys. It looks like an egg coming down the river. You are gonna catch brown trout and steelhead. But I will say this, a lot of guys, when you go fish these tributaries, they are mainly float fishermen. And they are mainly gonna fish a bead or a bag or beads and spawn or something like that, right? And a lot of guys don't think to bring an extra rod with them. And here's why you bring an extra rod with you. If you wanna throw little husky jerks in the river or a little lucky craft like this, a lot of guys just, just don't do it. They don't think about doing it. It will catch you brown trout, especially browns in the river, browns and steelhead, but browns will definitely eat a little jerk bait. You just whip it across and just a steady, slow reel. Just steady and slow like you'd fish a spinner, right? The other thing is a small 1.0 crankbait. Now you've seen me in the harbor use the 1.5, but in the river, try the 1.0. You don't see a lot of guys throwing a 1.0. Now, swinging a crankbait is gonna get you some big, big browns. But the other thing, I promise that'll work really well for you, and I'm gonna try to do this when I get out here tomorrow, just showing you the, the pre-game before I go out fishing tomorrow, is uh, like a spinner, like a blue fox spinner. Now, I wanted to just quickly tell you, for you guys that have never made spinners, I've done a few videos like a, a year or two ago showing you how easy it is 
to make spinners for trib fishing. And uh, let me just show you real quick how simple this is, guys. So the first thing you do is you put a clevis, you slide it right on the sleeve here. You slide that clevis on, you add a spinner, and I have an interchangeable spinner there. You add your weight. Of course, I don't have any of this ready. Right now you add a weight and a couple of other, you could add a, a couple of beads here on the back side. You add a couple beads on the back side, but you see that? That's just a start. And what I do is I use a walleye clevis there so I can interchange the blade. I can take that blade off. I can put a silver one on. I can put a smaller blade on. And, uh, but I really like a gold Indiana blade like that size right there. I think it's number three. And then I like a Gamagatsu EWG hook, a number six or a number four. I'll put a couple beads on the back side right here. Put that hook on there. Then I'll just take a, a round bend pliers. I'll wrap it around, snip it, and you can make all the spinners you want. I really love catching fish on spinners, and I honestly feel that most guys are underutilizing spinner fishing in the river, and it's a pretty simple technique. A lot of times I'm not casting up the river, I'm casting across or swinging it on an angle down river. And I see guys sometimes fishing spinners too fast, especially when it's cold. So just a nice steady retrieve. And I like to sp fish a spinner uh, at the beginning of a hole when I first start, or after I float fish it, I'll bust out my spinner rod before I leave and just swing a few spinners or cranks through there before I leave. You'll be surprised how these fish will come up and smack a spinner, a crankbait, a hard bait, a jig, when they'll pass up beads and beads and spawn bags and stuff like that. And then the other thing I want to mention to you guys, when you're tying your spawn bags, I use, you know, I use pink, I use chartreuse. I've got my eggs right here. The one thing I like to do, and these are brown trout eggs. My favorite eggs are probably brown trout eggs. So what I'll do is I'll open this up. I'll sprinkle some pink atlas. I like pink atlas, not a bunch. Sprinkle it in there. I'll mix it all up. Then I'll take it and I'll add it into the pink, the peach, the different color, orange, um, and fish it that way. And then if you're going to fish from shore or if you have a lot of dirty water or you're going to swing stuff on the bottom or at a power plant, you can always add one or two floats on your spawn bag. So this is a general setup to get started. If you're fishing high, dirty water, you know, you want to go with a bigger float like an 11 gram. When the water comes up, more weight more a bigger heavier float when that water's higher in a bigger river now if you're fishing the harbors in the marinas i've got like a six or seven or even a five gram float right here and and that's really all you need you, you, you just basically get started with a float rod a spinning rod some crankbait some jerk bait you catch a female brown you catch a female steelhead keep the eggs you can scrape them and there you go that's how you get your spawn and everything you need for this week's video. Now I'm gonna get everything loaded up in the truck and tomorrow after work, we're gonna try to go put the meat down, beat down, smack down, crack down, first time this fall for some steelhead. All right guys, I'm on the river right now, up on the Milwaukee River. What I love about steelhead fishing, two things. You get to move around a lot. You get to fish spot after spot, hole after hole, or at least I like to. I'll hit a spot for five to 15 minutes and if I'm not getting bobbers down, seeing fish rising or anything like that, unless I really know it's a great spot, spots like this I'm about to hit, I'll hit for five, 10 minutes, go down below the bridge, hit that for like 10 minutes, because usually your first few casts, your first few drifts, whether you're throwing a spinner, a bead, or float with spawn, as it gets colder here, spawn works a lot better. So uh, I'm gonna start with a spinner, then throw some spawn or beads, and we'll see what happens. Here we go. Alright guys, so I don't know if you saw that real quickly, do a little time lapse, but I maybe fished here five minutes, fan casted the whole hole with a spinner. I'll either start with a spinner, whoa, I'll start with a spinner, um, or I'll start with spawn and finish with a spinner. So don't forget to go through the hole and fish both ways. Alright, let's see if we can catch one on a spinner. Throw that spinner out in here in this current, I just kind of hold it. Just let it swing down nice and slow. 
reel a little bit because the blade's just turning right now. And they'll come up and smack it sometimes. Reel it in and I'm just swinging it across the hole. So I just kind of cast it out, set the hook and then let the current in this spot just kind of do its deal. It just pulls on it so fast I don't even want to reel. Just real slow reel it, just so it sinks down in that hole. That spinner just kind of glides through there. If there's a suspended fish, come up and hammer it. Nope. Oh, I got him. There he is, right here. Look at that. Yes. He came up and hammered it. Yes. On the spinner. Mm -mm. Love it. That's why you start in a hole. Start with a spinner in my second cast. Just keep moving. This this feels like a brown. Nice fish. Better get my net ready here. <clears throat> Come on. Nice brown trout. Look at that. Is that awesome or what? Come here, buddy. Come here. Got him. All right. Casting spinners for beautiful brown trout and steelhead in the fall, guys. Right there, the blue fox scores again. Probably the best one you can buy. Beautiful brown trout. I'm going to get him unhooked. I'll show you guys and let him go. All right, guys, here he is. Just got here. Second cast. Beautiful, kiped up. Great Lakes brown trout. Throwing a spinner. They love spinners, guys. Some of the biggest brown trout I have ever caught. I've been on spinners. We get this guy back. All right, guys. So I came in here and I, the first five minutes, second cast, caught a brown. Fished here about five minutes. Fished the whole hole. Swung through it with a spinner. Now I'm going to go through with spawn. And after that, I'm just going to keep moving. I have a half a day to fish today. So I'm going to just try covering water. And I'm picking holes in spots in the river where I don't see anyone. I've already gone to six different spots and have seen a guy here or two guys there and a guy in this spot. So I've just kind of been working my way up and down the river until I can find a nice little hole I have all to myself. And if you don't know a lot of spots, I totally understand. You fish here for maybe an hour or so. But I wouldn't fish a hole if you're not getting bit really more than 45 minutes. Um, that's just my little tip of the day. It'd be nice if it went down right in front of me here. Make it real easy. Oh, 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 yep, yep. Got him right there, right there, right where I wanted him to go down. That was perfect. Big brown. Oh my God, that was epic. That was epic. Did you guys see that? That was so cool. Oh man. Perfect. Come through with a spinner, follow up with spawn. Love it. The one-two combo, guys. And you can come through here and fish with a crankbait, too. They'll smash a crankbait. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Nice brown coming out of the water. That was so cool. So awesome. Love trip fishing. This is what I grew up doing. Started guiding many, many years ago. And you can come here with a fly rod, a center pin, just a spinning rod like this, standard float rod. You can catch them. All right. Man, I'm telling you what, this one is not, this one is not giving up. I don't want to walk too much in the water here and get too much mud in the water. See all the mud when I get in the water here? All that mud goes down into the, where I'm fishing. So there's part of the reason I don't want to jump in the water is I don't want to muddy it all up because when you muddy up the hole a lot of times that'll kind of slow down the bite. All right, nice female, real nice mama. Come here, come here, come here, mama. Come here, 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 come here. Come here. Come here. Here she comes. Oh, she pretty. So pretty, got her, got her. Oh, what a pretty fish. Look at this fish, you guys. What a beautiful 
Great Lakes brown trout. Is that beautiful or what? I mean, just she's all colored up. It's a female. Doesn't have a big kipe like the last one I caught. Big plump belly. Round nose. That's a female. Got him, got him. Yep, got him. Right at the tail out. Nice steelhead jumping out of the water. Yes. We want, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Come here, come here. Come here. I wanted a steelhead, guys. We got one on. Oh boy, it's got me down by the rocks. I gotta have him work his way up, up the river now. Come on, buddy, up the river. If it goes down that, that tail out, I am in deep, deep trouble. Yes, right at the tail out. No, 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 no. Here he comes. He's coming right at me. Here he comes, here he comes. Let's freaking go, I love it, I love it. Yes. Couple brown and a steelhead. First spot, right after work. I did a trip in the harbor today. I said, you know, I dropped off my boat. I said, I've got to come to the rivers and do an intro video on how to fish for steelhead and all the techniques. Nice chrome mama. What a chromer. She ain't done yet, watch, she's gonna take off. Come here. You done? You done? No, I didn't think so. Yes, 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 got her guys. Let's go. Hell yeah. That's what we wanted. All right, show you this fish real quick. There she is. Look at that dime, chrome, little mama, steelhead. Beautiful fish. You come down here to the tribs, you fish the simple techniques like I showed you. Spinner, jigs, tubes, simple how-to stuff. You catch yourself a lot of beautiful fish like this. There he is. All right. First drift on the float. First drift. Be a steelhead. That's got to be a steelhead. Got to be a big steelhead. All right. First drift. Yeah, with a float, yeah. I just got some on spinners before and I wanted to try a uh, spinner and then and then spawn or a bead. Oh yeah, I got me a good one this time. This is a good one here. This is a grown one here. Oh, oh boy. Gonna break my leg trying to catch this fish. Oh. Good fish though. What is that, a brown, a steelhead? Fighting like a big male steelhead. All right, here he is. Oh, I'm out of breath. I am out of breath. GoPro, please don't die. Oh, he's a double bander. He's so beautiful. Colored up male, such a beautiful fish. Oh my God. I need to have one of these guys, if I get this fish in and take a picture with me. Such a beautiful fish. Hell yeah, you guys got one on? So do I. Nice. I gotta get this guy in the net. Come on. Oh yeah. Hell yeah, guys. 
Nice work. Would you guys, one of you guys mind getting a quick pick for me? Oh, hell yeah. Just want to get this big male back. There he is, right here. Right here, right next to me. Yes. Yes. Oh. And she gone. And I'm tangled in the tree. Did you see that? Second or third drift. Had one on right in front of me. Float went down. And I missed it. Part of the game. Now I'm back all in the tree and all tangled again. Damn it. All right, guys. So that's, that's a wrap for this week's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Talked about crankbaits. We talked about spinner fishing, a bead, a bead bag combo, a hair jigs, all the types of lines that I use, a big heavy float when you're fishing big rivers, more weight, a heavier line when you got crystal clear rivers in smaller conditions, a smaller float, lighter line, all that good stuff. Get yourself a steelhead rod if you haven't come out here. Get some spinners and cranks and take advantage of this. All you need is a pair of waders. Tons of public water fishing here on the Milwaukee River, the Root River in Racine, the Pikes Creek. The best river probably in our state, guys, to be honest with you, is the Sheboygan River up by Kohler. Now, you do need a private pass to get up there and fish, but unbelievable fishing up there right now. So hopefully you enjoyed this week's video. Tips and tricks and how to catch them. Wasn't a complete beatdown, but I fell on my butt. I cast it up in the tree 20 times. And that's how it rolls with Captain Potato. So thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment. I got to roll. We'll see ya.